All right, we're going to start, start talking about section 11.1. What we're going to talk about in 11.1 are quadratic equations and how to what's called complete the square. You might not even know what that means yet, but I promise you will in just a little while. So quadratic equations and completing the square. Okay, firstly, before we go any further, I've got to kind of tell you what a quadratic equation is. When you hear that, that word quadratic, you hear that word quadratic, I know that the quad, it makes it seem like it's four, but the quadratic equation for us means any equation where the power the largest power of some variable is 2. So like anything with an x squared in it, if that's the largest power, that's a quadratic equation. Of course, it has to have an equal sign that makes it an equation. But a quadratic equation is a second degree equation. What second degree means is that the largest power is 2. Not 3, not 4, not 5. The largest power is 2. Not 1, but 2. So quadratic means power... Two. This is where you fill in the blank. Quadratic means power... Two. two. Okay, very good. All four of you who are with me today. Well, if you really think about it, we've literally been dealing with quadratic equations since the first day of class in here. Literally been dealing with this since the first day of class because every quadratic equation can be represented as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Have you seen those since the first day of class? Yeah, in fact that's when we took our break from c.1 to go to c.4 to learn how to factor because that's the only way we were able to deal with those things. Are you with me folks? Mm -hmm. So you've been dealing with these by using the diamond method. Sometimes with the extra step if there's an a factoring them and solving them. Raise your hand if you remember how to do that. If you didn't raise your hand right there, you can go back and remember how to do that. Okay? Go back and look at that. I told you a long time ago, though, that there were some things that you can't factor. Some of these problems you cannot solve by factoring they don't work. We're going to learn today, and we're going to learn tomorrow and Friday, how to do these things without factoring, so that we can universally solve any quadratic equation. Would you like to learn how to do that? Sure. That way you're not just stuck with factoring. It's kind of cool. Well, we're going to start kind of, kind of, kind of down here. We're not, we're not going to worry about equations with this term right now. We're going to build up to that. First, I want to look at what happens when I take somewhat of a simple example. Let's do x squared equals 9. x squared equals 9. Now, I'm going to show you two ways that we can, we can solve this problem. One is the old way. One's going to be a new way. Are you with me? So old way. The old way you'd solve this is realize, oh, this is an x squared. I can get everything to one side and zero on the other side and then factor. True? How do I get everything to one side here? Okay, so I'd subtract 9 and this would become x squared minus 9 equals 0. True? What's that? Difference of squares. You all should be just Johnny on the spot with different squares, right? So x squared minus 9, you say, oh, all right, this would be x plus 3 x minus 3 equals 0. So far so good? All right. And you go, okay, well I'm not quite done yet. I would do x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x would equal negative 3. x would equal positive 3. How many solutions did we get? What was our largest power in our equation? That is not a coincidence. The largest power in your equation dictates how many solutions you're going to get. If that was a power 3, you'd be getting 3 solutions. Power 4, you'd be getting 4 solutions. This is a power 2, you're going to be getting 2 solutions all the time. In our case, that's 3 and negative 3. How many of you feel okay with the old way? Okay, that, that's old. We've, we've done that. Now we're going to look at a different way to look at this.
let's say we kept it x squared equals 9. So in other words, something squared equals a constant. Now using what we learned the last like few weeks, probably three weeks here, can you tell me what operation will undo a square? We'll do that. Yeah, we knew that a square root and square, that those are inverse operations, right? They undo each other. We also knew that I could take a square root of both sides of an equation. Or I could square both sides. Or in other words, I can take both sides of an equation. Do I have an equation here? Both sides of an equation are the same power. Remember that square roots are actually a power. Square roots are a one-half power, right? So if I take square root of both sides, that, that's going to be equivalent. So this says, all right, well, what if I took the square root of both sides of the equation. Look at the board here with me, folks. What happens on this side of the equation? How much do I get? X. X. That's what I want, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. 3. Wait. Uh-oh. Something happened. Do you see what happened? How many solutions did we get over here? How many solutions did we get over here? That's a problem. Why is that a problem? Well, that's a problem because we lost half our solutions. It's like going to the bank and half your money is gone. This is the money, right? <laughs> we want, even though it's negative, we want the money. We want both those solutions. How do I make this one come out like this one? We're going to talk about that right now. If you think about our original example, x squared equals 9, if you just think about the solutions, you know that 3 is going to work, right? Because 3 squared is 9. You also know that negative 3 is going to work because negative 3, when I square it, what happens to that negative? Are you with me? Negative 3 times negative 3, th that negative is gone because when we square something, the operation negative is eliminated because you're multiplying a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive. So when you're doing a square root, when you're doing a square root of both sides of an equation, what's happening here is that you are actually, if you don't, if you don't, uh, Sorry, if you don't factor. You're actually eliminating one of those negative solutions. Because when you square something, you're saying both a positive and a negative of the same number are going to work. Because when I square something, that negative goes away. It becomes positive. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. So in order to show that, in order to get both of our solutions, what we do down here, this is probably the, one of the most important things we're going to teach today. You've got to put both a plus and a minus there. If you put, put both a plus and a minus, that looks like a positive, negative in this case. That's saying that I'm going to have two solutions. I'm going to have positive 3 and I'm going to have negative 3. So in our case, when we write it out, we say x equals, yes, positive 3, but x also equals the negative version of that number, negative 3. Now do I have both my solutions like I thought? Yeah. yeah. So, what are you going to do every time you take a square root? What are you going to put in front of that square root? Notice we don't need it on the left-hand side. Okay, we only need it on one side. We just need it on our, our constant side. This is already taken care of. X is our variable. So, <coughs> every time you take a square root, you must include plus minus. I hope you'll feel okay with that. Now, you might be wondering, well, Mr. Leonard, why didn't <laughs> we've been taking square roots for like a chapter? Why didn't we do that before? Well, before, you actually never did take the square root. It was given to you, wasn't it? It was already on the paper. You didn't put it on the paper. It, you didn't invent it for your problem. All right? It was already there. It was already done to that point. So if you put a square root on your paper, you must have the plus minus. Well, we're going to write that down. If you take the square root, that means it wasn't there before, and you put it on your paper, you must also have a plus minus right in front of that. Write that down. If you take the square root, you must have plus minus. What this does, this gives you your two solutions. If you don't have it, let's, let's ignore this again. If you ignored that and you ignored that, you'd only get one solution. you get positive three. You wouldn't get negative three. Do you have the problem right? No, you don't even have it half right, really. You, you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point there. So when you include the plus minus, you're going to get how many solutions? Two. two. One positive, one negative. So you must have the plus minus. This is what gives you the two solutions.
Let's try a couple more. Are you ready? That's what's pretty okay. You probably do that one in your head, right? You just think about that. Three and negative three. Let's work up to some ones that you might not be able to do in your head. Okay, so x squared equals 20. Now, in our case over here, let's look at the board again. In our case over here, this was a very nice problem because you could do it two ways. This way, you could subtract 9, and we knew how to factor difference of squares. This is pretty easy. We get 3 and negative 3. Will a difference of squares work with this problem? If you subtract 20, you're going to have x squared minus 20. Can you factor x squared minus 20? Well, you can, but you're going to have some square roots up there. It's not going to be very easy to factor that. This one's pretty easy because you just did 3 and minus 3. That gives you 9. That's, that's great. But over here, we go, okay, x squared. If I do this, uh, x squared minus 20 equals 0. I go, oh, okay, x squared is a square. 20, is 20 a square of a number? No. So I, I can't do x plus something, x minus something. Can you think of something times itself that gives you 20? No. No, we did it. Do you see that we're going to need a different way to go about this problem? Mm -hmm. You guys awake today? Mm -hmm. All right. Hope so. So this way, not, not, so, not so bueno for us. Not so much. However, we still do have x squared equals to a number. Can you undo x squared? Mm -hmm. What undoes that, folks? Give me a little bit more participation out of you guys. Some of you look like zombies. I know it's just past Halloween, but get out of the Halloween mode. Let's go. A square root will undo this. If I take a square root of the left hand side, is that good enough? No, nope, we have to do both. It's under here. Both sides, okay. People on the right side of the room, does that look good to, to you? Yes. Just like that? No. That's what I mean. Wait, what am I? I'm forgetting something plus huge right now. Why, why do I need plus or minus? <laughs> if I don't have plus or minus, I'm going to get how many solutions? Minus. How many am I supposed to get? Two. That's the biggest part of your day, right there. It's the littlest part, but it's the biggest part. Of course I get x. On the right-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of 20. Does that show you two solutions? Yeah. Now, are, are, we, are we done yet? Probably not if I'm asking that question. Can you simplify the square root of 20? Yep, 4 and 5. So 4 times 5, that's 20. You're going to get 2 root 5. You with me on 2 root 5? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show those steps anymore. That's up to you. I mean, we've, we've been doing that for a while now. So x equals plus or minus 2 root 5. Mm -hmm. Our two solutions are 2. Please write this. Please write like this. Right, what, we're, what we're not doing, we're not making it 2 plus root 5 and 2 minus root 5. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. That's not the way we write that. Write that down and then cross that out. Okay? Honestly, because I have a lot of people who do this. They mistake where that plus or minus goes. What we're doing, this plus and minus, that's in front of your solution here. You actually do get 2 root 5. That means positive 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5. Those are your solutions. The positive version of this little piece and the negative version of this little piece. 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5 version.